All right, I got cut off. Here's part two. Again, showing there's no purgatory. Jesus Christ did not have to get tormented in flames. It was all paid on the cross. Again, I think we show that with scriptures here. And we already showed Hebrews 10. He offered his body once for all, sanctified, perfected once for all, his body and his blood, remember? So, again, he didn't have to go to hell to pay for extra sins or however they think it happened, right? He paid for it all on the cross. But I also want to show here about the people who say that the grave was really some kind of third option purgatory. And it's obviously you either go to heaven or hell. Let's start at 31 here. Psalm 31, again, read them off yourself, just because I'm using the, the scriptures here does not mean I'm trying to add, change, remove, or even record for posterity scriptures, just consider it a paraphrase. Read it off yourself, Psalm 31. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee, let the wicked be ashamed, and let them be silent in the grave. Again, the wicked are going to the grave. And let's go here to Hosea. Hosea 13, again, read it off yourself. Start here at 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Again, he's going to ransom them from the power of the grave and redeem them from death. Again, does the grave sound like some kind of paradise or Abraham's bosom? No. And to confirm this here, like you said, like we said here, you can go to Revelation 118, and he's got the keys. It's showing off the keys of death and of hell. The wicked are going to the grave, right? The, the beggar went up by angels above the grave, above hell, to Abraham's bosom. I don't know why they're getting some kind of third option out of that. And either way, if they wanted to say it was Abraham's bosom, either way, it doesn't have flames in Abraham's bosom. And it says in Romans 4 here, to paraphrase, Abraham believed God, you know, and it was counted for him for righteousness. It was not of his works at all. And when Moses came to visit the Lord... Do you think he was coming from limbo or purgatory? I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all. But most importantly here, again, you see the scriptures don't talk about it. There's two choices. And he ransomed us. He ransomed them from the power of the grave and redeemed them from death. He is our redeemer. All right. What about the doctrine that they're teaching about Jesus being tormented or whatever? Again, we're going to go through that. But first, we know that Jesus Christ did go to the heart of the earth. Look here, Matthew 12. Again, read it off yourself. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And again, why do they say this is uh, hell here? All right, let's go here. Back to Jonah. It's telling us to go back to Jonah. Again, read it off yourself, but here's Jonah, which just got referred to by Matthew, chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, and the mist of the seas and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came into thee, then to thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. I'm going to point out here, he cried out out of the belly of hell. Again, it's compared 
to being in the heart of the earth. And we see here, the earth with her bars was around him, right? And we know that's also called the prison. Let's go check that out. First Peter chapter 3. You can read it off yourself. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. Notice this here. It talks about him going to preach unto the spirits in prison. And here we go to Second Peter here. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned with an them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And we see here, what? They were cast down to hell, and the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Again, it's a prison. And we see that people go there, though, too, right? So he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Talking about the people from Noah's day, way back in the Old Testament, in the beginning and all that. Okay, so if he went down into the belly of hell, where all the torment is, to preach to the people during Noah's day, who probably didn't even have a chance to hear because it was wickedness everywhere. Noah was basically the only one in his family. Be hard for him to preach to the whole world, but who knows? It could have been, you know, all those people before the New Testament is more likely, I would think. Not just in that Genesis generation. But also, if you went down to hell, then what they would say, you know, oh, okay, he was tormented there for three days. Again, no, I don't think so. I'm going to show it here in scriptures. And again, the idea that he had to pay for extra sins in hell. Is definitely wrong. We know he did it all on the cross. Once forever we're sanctified. His body and his blood forever. But I want to prove it now. The flames. I certainly believe did not hurt him. Let's go to Isaiah 43 first. Alright. I'm going to go through three examples here. That I think more than clearly prove. The flames. We're not going to hurt him. But here we go. Chapter 43. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Again, when you walk through the fire, you're not going to be burned. That should be enough, I would think. But let's go to the second example. Because they'll say, well, he's fulfilling a burnt offering or something like that. So let's go to another example that I'm going to use about that. You already know, I'm going to Judges 13. Which again points to Jesus Christ. Because Samson's birth, he was a Nazarite from birth. Pointing you to Jesus Christ. Alright, let's go here. Again, the angel visiting the parents and all that. Pointing to the New Testament. And all these things. But let's again read it off for yourself. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord for Ma. Whoops. Let me get the page here. For Manoah knew not. That he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? That when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering, and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously, 
and Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass, when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it, and fell on their faces to the ground. Again, what's happening? The angel of the Lord is getting on their, boat, their burnt offering and going straight up. The burnt offering going straight up. What do you see there? You see the death. You see the flame. And he's going straight up, but he's unhurt. It doesn't say he's tormented in flames, right? The flames went straight up. The burnt offering went straight up with no pain from the flames. That's my second one. Let's go to the big one. You already know where I'm going. Daniel 3. The best example here you could have, except for the fact that the New Testament says he went into the prison to preach and say tormented or pain for your sins down there. He paid for it all on the cross. One body offered for all. He was perfectly sanctified. His body, his blood. All right, he didn't have to go pay for extra sins there, but he did go into the heart of the earth, as we see. Again, read it off yourself. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake, and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into, burn, into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake, and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Here we see Jesus Christ going into the fiery furnace, foretelling that he's going into the fiery furnace, yet not only did the fire have no power over him, not a single hair is singed. Not even his coat was changed. Not even the smell of fire had power over him. He didn't even smell like fire. If this doesn't prove these three or four witnesses I've given you from Scripture, I mean, I don't know what will. All pointing to Jesus Christ. He went down into the belly of hell, conquered hell, he rose again without even the smell of fire on him. He paid for all of our sins on the cross, not paying for extra sins in hell. There's only heaven and hell. There's not this third option. How do you die in your sins? If you don't believe in Jesus Christ is how you die in your sins. I mean, it's very strange doctrines that people are just adding to the word here, it seems like. Again, Jesus Christ is the one who crossed that uncrossable gulf. Let's hear Hebrews. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. 
again, Jesus Christ defeated the devil and death. We see he has the keys of death and of hell. Didn't say he had he had to show off the key to purgatory or something like that. No, he went into the belly of hell. The flames had no power over him. Our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. He came up after preaching to the spirits in prison. And what does he preach to the captives? He preaches liberty. Remember Isaiah? He came to preach liberty to captives. To paraphrase. Let's just go to Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Again, I want to point out here, the opening of the prison to them that are bound, he preached to the spirits in prison and saved some of them that were saved. Remember that earthquake in Acts when Paul and them were freed. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house, to paraphrase. But remember it was the earthquake that set them free from the prison. And remember, there was that earthquake at the crucifixion. I think it's foretelling a piece of it there. But we've already gone over that he was not tormented in the flames. Purgatory is not an option. He paid for your sins only on, on the cross. He finished it all. And we saw in Luke 16, the man was calling Abraham father. He was a Jewish person. But he was not saved. He did not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I proved those points from the scriptures. But now I get to, again, we need to study on it more, of course, and pray on it more. Well, what do I think was the basic thing that happened here? How I imagine it, until I can get all the scriptures together for you. But I think we got rid of the tormented and flames lie. And we got rid of the purgatory lie, at least from scriptures. Let's go to Psalm 89, how I like to imagine for now, until we get it all together. Hopefully, God willing, we'll make a whole video just on what all that happened in the prison. God willing. But look at this, Psalm 89. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. Again, he defeated the devil and death. I like to imagine them getting beat down like before his face like that. But let's also go here. I think this points as well to what happened in the prison. But these last two parts are just for to point out for interest here. Because I need more scriptures to show you these here. Chapter 3. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go into Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went into Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. I think it's interesting how it's a three-day travel across the city. And he didn't begin preaching, it says, until a day's journey. Again, this part, this last part is just for fun, for, until we get all the scriptures together here, but... We know that Jesus Christ preached unto the spirits in the prison. He was in the heart of the earth for three days. I think this is pointing. And of course all Nineveh was doomed. Right? So he's preaching to the damned. Jesus Christ went into the heart of the earth and preached to the spirits in prison. And yet for that first day there was no preaching. I think that's, like I said, he beat his foes in his face, bound them in everlasting chains. And the one-third number, as we know that that evil one deceived one-third of the stars, right? I think that's not a coincidence, pointing to all that stuff that happened in the prison. So that for that first day, he didn't preach to them because they're damned. And he put them in everlasting chains of darkness, the fallen angels. And then he preached to everybody else those last two days. Crossed the gulf, saved them. And we see he brings saints back as well when he ascends. 
to his father. Again, um, thank you for watching. God bless you. I got way too long on this one, but remember, there is no purgatory. You can only die in your sins if you don't believe in Jesus Christ. And thank God for showing us all this. And may God watch over us all. Amen.